Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is an introduction to access lists and it's the first in a series of tutorials dedicated to this topic because there's a lot of information to cover. Now you're going to come across access lists quite often because there are many things you can do with them. It's very common to use an access list in order to permit or deny traffic. However, you can also use them just to identify traffic for other uses. Perhaps you want to find only certain types of traffic you want to announce in a routing protocol. Or you're only looking to identify a certain type of traffic uh, for prioritization, like quality of service commands or something along those lines. Okay, so keep in mind, access lists are pretty flexible in allowing us to identify traffic. In this tutorial, we're going to start off by covering all the basics of access lists. Now, when you have an access list, really all it is is a series of statements. And traffic is going to be compared to each statement. So packet will be compared to each one until a match is found. And when a packet matches a particular statement, each statement has a little action associated with it. So if you match me, then do this. Oftentimes, access lists are applied to uh, router interfaces. So here, we could apply this access list right on this interface. And we have a choice. We can use the access list to filter traffic going into the router, or we can use it to filter traffic leaving the router. So either inbound or outbound. Keep in mind, you don't have to apply an access list to an interface in order to use it. Some of those other examples I mentioned, like uh, using an access list for a routing protocol or quality of service means, there you don't necessarily apply it to an interface, you use it in a different way. And we'll look at some of that in some of the routing protocol tutorials. Now there are two types of access lists. The first one is known as the standard access list, and that's the simpler of the two types. A standard access list uses the source IP address information only to identify traffic. So when you're looking at a packet, the source IP of that packet is examined. The destination IP and any higher layer protocols like TCP and UDP, they're not considered when you're using a standard access list. Now the second type is known as the extended access list, and this one is a bit more complicated and complex. An extended access list considers more IP packet information when matching traffic. So when you look at a packet, not only the destination IP address and the source IP address, but port numbers, transport protocols like TCP and UDP, and other factors can all be examined to match traffic. Okay, so two types, standard and extended. Let's take a look at the order of operation when we talk about access lists. By the way, access lists are commonly referred to as access control lists, and they're often abbreviated, abbreviated as ACL. So you may see that come up, and you may even hear some people refer to them as ACLs. Well, they're just pronouncing the acronym there. So keep that in mind. They're all talking about the access list. Now, we mentioned you can apply an access list to inbound or to outbound traffic. Well, when you apply an access list to inbound traffic, that filtering takes place before any routing decisions are made. However, when you apply an access list to outbound traffic, first the router is going to determine where a packet should go. So that routing process happens first. And if that packet happens to exit an interface where an outbound access list is configured, then your filtering takes place. So on the inbound, filtering takes place first before routing, and on the outbound, routing takes place and then the filtering occurs. Keep in mind, you can only have one access list applied to an interface in each direction for each protocol. So if we're talking about IP, we can have one IP access list configured for the inbound on this interface and only one IP access list configured for the outbound on this interface. So you cannot have two for the inbound and two for the outbound. You can have only one access list in each direction, so you can have an inbound configured, but no outbound, and vice versa. Now, I mentioned earlier that after a match is made to a particular statement in an access list, an action can be taken. Now, there are two types of actions that an access list can take. The first one is to deny traffic, to actually drop the packet. The second action is the permit, 
In other words, allow the packet to pass. So that's it. Permit it or deny it if you match a particular statement. Now there's also one other type of action and this is commonly referred to as an implicit deny. This action is actually implied at the end of the access list. So if a packet makes its way down an access list and gets to the very end and it hasn't matched any of the particular statements, then that packet is dropped automatically. And you won't necessarily see this configured in the access list. This is default implied behavior. So you just have to remember this, okay? Now there is one way to configure an access list to, def to avoid this type of default behavior. And we'll cover that a little bit later when we look at the configuration tutorials. Now when packets are compared to an access list, it's done sequentially. In other words, we would start off comparing a packet to statement one. If no match is found, we move on to statement two. If no match is found, we move on to statement three. And here, if a match is made, then we're done comparing the packet to the access list. So if a match is made, we would go ahead and enact our permit or our deny action, and the packet would not be compared to statement four and five. Our analysis is done, no more comparison. Okay, so now because of this behavior, there is a suggestion which states you should put your most specific entries at the top of the access list, your most specific statements. And here's why. Let's say statement one is very broad. It, it applies to a very broad range of IPs. However, statement four is very narrow, and in fact, it applies only to a subset of IPs of this broader range. Well, because of the sequential analysis, all packets in this narrow range would hit the broad range first if it's in statement one and then they would match and the action would be applied and then that's it. They would never get down to statement four. So you'd want to put statement four up at the top so that that small bit of traffic that you want to take a different behavior, you want to do something different with it, that gets caught first. And then all of the other IPs that are matched in the broader range since they would not match here, they would move through and eventually hit the broad range and then that action is applied. Okay, so just remember your most specific statements at top of the access list and then get broader and broader as you move on. Also keep in mind when you create a new line in an access list, it's added to the bottom of the access list or the end. So if we were to add something here, we would create statement six and statement seven and so on and so forth. Also keep in mind, you cannot de delete a single statement in a standard access list. You can only delete the entire thing, okay? So all or nothing when it comes to deleting standard access lists. Okay, let's summarize what we covered. Access lists are used to identify traffic. And when that happens, when a match is made, there's an action associated with it. Either permit the traffic or deny the traffic. We know there are two types of access lists, the simple one, which is a standard, and the more complex one, the extended. And we're going to cover both of those in the coming tutorials. Access lists can be applied to either inbound or to outbound packets. And at the end of each access list is an implicit deny. So if no matches are made, the packet will get to the end and is by default denied. We know that packets are compared sequentially to each statement in the access list. And there are certain rules to follow when you edit an access list. Namely, new entries go to the bottom and you can only delete the entire thing, not a particular statement in an access list. Okay, so these are all of the basics of access lists. In the next coming tutorials, we'll get into more and more details. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching.